Ward are the main part of this cowl from a Singapore dummy corporation. Indeed. And then quite separately, we place an order for these on Amazon. Put it together ourselves. Precisely. It'll have to be a rather large order to avoid suspicion. How much? Say 10,000. Well, at least we'll have spares. What the f are you doing? The Lamborghini Aventador is arguably one of the most influential supercars of the modern era. The aggressive body styling, the iconic scissor doors, 740 naturally aspirated horsepower V12, and Formula One inspired suspension. They all merge together to create a vehicle worthy of Bruce Wayne. A car styled so loudly, your imagination could probably hear what this thing must sound like. But if you've never heard a base Aventador before, you might find it to be a bit of a letdown. That's okay though, because if you have Lamborghini money, then the aftermarket has a solution for you. But in a world where buying a Lamborghini is supposed to be the ultimate symbol of expression, how do you make something like that sound more individual? OJ Lopez here, and you're watching the Fluid Motor Union YouTube channel. If you're new here, you might not be familiar with the fact that we're kind of engine audiophiles. In fact, our claim to fame was building a fire shooting exhaust featured on Top Gear's website back in the already saturated Gallardo market in 2010. To this day, that exhaust sounds way more F1 than anything else available. 15 years later, we've continued to refine our craft to the point I feel confident enough to say that if we build something, it's because there's nothing else out there like it. And once again, opportunity has come knocking. Now this 2016 Aventador S Roadster has an owner with a problem. They got the itch to make it more of their own because there's just too many other black Aventadors. So they contacted us about what they should do and Today, I'm going to show you how we use our knowledge on exhaust design to extract the most visceral exhaust scream possible out of this V12 engine. Trust me when I say this one is going to give you chills. But before we jump in, hit that like button and drop a message in the comments. We are trying to grow this channel and if you like what you see, clicking the notification bell will keep you up to speed with all our videos. Now the first step to building any exhaust system is getting a baseline of what it sounds like first. Different customers are looking for different things and not everyone wants to drive around a straight piped race car. To do this, we're going to have to listen to what it sounds like free revving and then again under load while driving. Keller, can you start it up and rev okay. it up for me? Here we go. Keller, rev it all the way up. I swear to God, my foot's to the floor. Swear to ah, me! What? Ah, ow! Ow, oh, you're angry! Ah. The Gallardo was the baby Lambo, and it was a kind of an exercise on building a budget Lamborghini for a lot of customers. And it just in my opinion, just was a lot tamer, um, not as exciting, very cool, great styling, great sounding V10. The V10 was the car that we became exhaust famous, <laughs> uh, exhaust viral with. And, um, but even driving those, it just wasn't, uh, it was very, it was a comfortable car. It moved in great styling, uh, real aggressive, but until I drove the Murcielago, I didn't really understand Lamborghini because the first time I drove a Murcielago, I had a hard time getting in. You got to get in, you sit down. Um, it was a six speed, which those were rare. Um, it was real heavy clutch. Your feet are smashed together. You can't see out of the back window. It rode like crap. The brakes were squeaky and they didn't work till it warmed up. The throttle was heavy. Like I said, the clutch was heavy, it was hard to row. And all of this stuff added up together made the car fun. It was like being on a roller coaster. Any one of those things would ruin a car, but because they were all together in this car with a bunch of power, a bunch of torque, it just made it 
an experience as opposed to a car, just something you drive around. Mm -hmm. So with that, I kind of got why people were into Lamborghinis. This thing rides smooth, it's easy to shift, it's easy uh, to drive. The styling is nuts. And if I were to get on it, it'd probably get pretty, pretty crazy, but I don't know. There's just something about that a Lambo needs a certain amount of rawness and scariness to really be a full Lamborghini experience. Mm -hmm. And if you hear this exhaust right now, I know it's in quiet mode. I know it's got valves, but if you hear this exhaust right now, it just doesn't give that vibe at all. So Donnie, who's here with me is my service writer. He talked to the customer. Um, you know, what was Mr. Rose looking for? You deal a lot with customers who are trying to um, modify their car. They don't know exactly what they want to do. They see videos of maybe a loud exhaust online. Uh, tell me kind of what he was going through when he came to you, what you deal with when a customer is looking for something like this. Yeah, so from talking to him, I mean, it, it sounded like his uh, desires were kind of in line with what you were describing. He was looking for a more um, raw, aggressive, Lamborghini-esque feel to this car. Um, so he had already uh, wrapped the car matte black, lowered it. I think it's on Vossen forged wheels. Um, so he kind of spiced it up from the stock white car that it was originally. Yeah, he definitely felt that the exhaust note was lacking. Um, it didn't have that kind of like iconic, loud, punchy uh, V12 scream that you kind of think of when you think of these cars. Um, although I will say that the these second gen ones with the exhaust valves open do seem a little more uh, aggressive than oh for sure. The, the more ones. you get, the more you get into like special editions, the closer they get to it, but. Mm. If you've ever heard one of these cars with a decent aftermarket exhaust, it's really... Yeah, um, it's something else. Yeah, it's an yeah. amazing automotive experience. With that said, I've heard some not great exhausts on these cars, and you wouldn't know unless you know what you're listening for. A lot of people, when they hear a loud V12, they hear that noise and they can't imagine there being any difference because it's so visceral, it's so loud. They can't imagine there being any difference between exhaust systems and what you could do. They just hear this screaming loud pitch. And because we deal with these things on a regular basis, and because we build them, we pay attention to this stuff. I kind of have a ear for this at this point over the years. And not just this car, but a lot of cars, hence our, um, our reputation for building custom exhausts. And I don't really like taking on anything that I don't think that we can make better than what's out there. And there's a lot of really great systems for it, but there's not systems out there that do what I want to do on this thing. And that's the real reason that we're embarking on this project. Cruising, I think we've pretty much heard this thing. It's pretty tame, right, Donnie? Yeah, it's super tame. I mean, we've been able to have a conversation this whole time, you know, without any trouble. When I throw it into sport. Now, you can hear a downshift. And it kind of knows throttle input too. If I'm not trying to cruise it and I'm not on it for a while, it'll kind of shut it. Some little burbles there. Burbles are popular now. Manufacturers are doing it. It's not just aftermarket tuners. It's fun. It sounds fun. I like it. It could be overdone, but... Yeah, I like the burbles. I've heard a lot of them at this point, but they always put a smile on my face. And that's really what it's about. So you hear that there, got a little bit of a high pitch. Um, it's a real, um, you can hear a lot of the air moving, you know, it's not really a depth to it. Uh, a lot of the scream, you could hear it in the background, you can hear that pitch in there, but it's just not 
really snappy enough to make this thing feel like a Lamborghini. Yeah, it's still very subdued even with the uh, valves open. But I think I've got a solution for that. We've got to get the rear bumper off. We've got to go over my plan, kind of relay some of that once we are seeing what we're working with in there. It'll be a little easier to explain it, but I've got an idea for something that uh, is really going to make this thing stand out. But we got to put the work in first. Let's get back to the shop. Hey guys, if you're working on an exotic car such as this Aventador, you gotta take the rear bumper off. Many times you have to, especially for the rear exhaust to come off. Keep all your screws and bolts all together. And you'll group them, put them in bags, keep them with the parts they come off of. It'll go a long way in helping keep your car very, very nice. Thanks. So behold, Keller's got the painstaking work of removing the rear bumper here in order to expose the exhaust. Now we're stopping here with the disassembly to kind of highlight a few things. And before we disassemble, we're gonna to try to get this thing in the dyno and get some numbers as well. Now, I have two exhaust systems here. Both of them are from the Aventador. Differences right away, you probably notice. Four exhaust tips, three exhaust tips. Now, the Aventador utilizes a system where it's a big single tip in the bumper, these things come to the exit point and you can see the valves on the outside. The older system here, this is from an early Aventador, that system is valved as well. But as you can see, the pre-S versions are much bigger, they're probably a little bit heavier and they probably sound a little different. But I want to go over some of the things that I think we could improve on on the stock exhaust right away. And then maybe I'll get into what we're gonna do a little bit differently on our system that I don't think has been done before. So I'm gonna explain what's going on with the stock system so that way you understand what we're trying to accomplish here. Now, first off, the car has 12 cylinders. It's banked into four sets of three cylinders, which then go into two pipes, one on each side. And the outlets, the most direct outlet are these two big pipes here. The center one being the muffled section, which gives you two modes, a sport mode, and then a quiet mode. Right away, what I'm seeing on each of the bank, we have more or less a straight shot. So, I'll highlight my light back here. That clamp down there is where the two banks merge. I should say the one bank with the two sets of three cylinders merge coming out. And if you follow along here, follows this pipe to the valve and then out of the system. Now these things appear to have a straight shot on each bank. However, there is a crossover pipe here. The problem with this crossover pipe is that it's going to act as more of a balance tube. We're not looking for a balance tube. Uh, this is more of an H configuration and if you look, that angle is closer to a 90 degree angle. Uh, I refer this to a lot of times to plumbing where um, in order to get the right flow and pressure they say never plumb at a 90 degree angle. This is true when you're trying to maximize sound and performance as well. Now. Some people will talk about balance pipes, H pipes, how they can allow the banks to even the, dis the pressure differential between the two, thus creating, you're not gonna have much pressure differential coming out of these two sides out of here. You will have some residents that it's picking up and canceling out. However, it's not the optimal way to do it. It's the optimal way for Lamborghini to do it with the constraints of having to meet emissions, having to meet sound levels, having to meet uh, packaging constraints, having to meet uh, budget constraints, trying to maximize profits. This works for them and it's a big V12, they sound great anyway. So 
they're not super worried about making the best, most amazing sound possible out of this. They're already working with the whole lot. So they feel that this is good enough. But as I said previously in the test drive, didn't think it's really that special yet. So what I'm planning to do, at least in this rear section, is not have a 90 degree, but have a more true X, which smoothly blends both of the banks before it comes out of the straight through section, the straight through valve section. What that's gonna do is it's gonna clean up a lot of the tones, give it a more um, even uh, pitch between the two banks. Um, anytime we use our Smooth Merge X, that's really where we're getting a lot of the V12 sound as opposed to a two six cylinder sound. Um, a lot of people will say it's 12 cylinders. Or shouldn't. There is a difference and you'll hear it once we're done here. But the big differentiation is gonna be these valves of where they're placed. That can have an effect on sound quality. So moving those as well. Um, ideally, they're in a good location where they're at towards the end in order to um, allow the exhaust to build up um, and keep its tone, keep its pitch the further back you go. But the problem being is that uh, that can create some unpleasant noises when the system's closed going back through. Usually you don't care because you want a more quiet mode, but we're looking for something that sounds great and then sounds insane. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to optimize not just the straight through section, but also how we control the muffling. So this is all going to get reworked. Um, I've got a few ideas for that. We'll lay out a rough design, but a lot of times the best laid plans, once we start getting the metal together, that can change huge. Um, the most important part we're gonna get into next, remember I was telling you about those three cylinder on each side sets that are going from the exhaust headers to the uh, downpipes and then out. I think that's where we're gonna be able to optimize the pitch of this engine by using something that we've been using since 2010, which is a, a resonance chamber reverse megaphone. Now, what the megaphone's gonna allow us to do is increase the pitch depending on how long I can get that megaphone and really bring out more of the V12 scream. But as I'll show you here in a second, we're kind of really limited on space. So getting two megaphones in here would be challenging, but I wanna to try to get four megaphones in here before we get to the merge on each side, which is gonna be really challenging. This is the front three primary tubes of the two three cylinder sets on the headers. Each of them has a connection point that goes into the related downpipe, as you see here. And that downpipe turns into a Y pipe over the axle here and back to the clamp I was showing you from the back there. That's where all the magic is gonna have to happen. We'll be able to do a lot in the exhaust as well, but space constraints isn't going to really allow me to get the megaphones inside of this rear area the way I want to. Like I said, two megaphones would be cool. Four would be a lot cooler. And a lot cooler is what we're trying to do. So now the only thing left to do is get this thing on the dyno and see what it's putting down. All right, so we got a couple of runs in and it looks like we're just about a hair under 520 horsepower. Now, we use our dyno as a tool in order to gauge the delta of when we do an exhaust, when we do a tune. This allows us to have a baseline to know if the changes that we're making actually have an effect. And if they don't, then we gotta come up with something else. But with all the work that we've done on Evegidors and 
other Lamborghinis, we know that there's a lot of power left over in this exhaust system, as well as tweaking the ECU. So you're gonna be seeing more once we get this thing back off and we get our exhaust on there and then get it back on here for a proper ECU tune. But that being said, we've got our numbers and we know where to go now. So let's get this thing apart and get building. With the preliminary work out of the way, we are ready to tear into this thing. Looking to build the most unique sounding and performing Aventador exhaust out there. It won't be easy, but nothing ever is. And I think we've got a pretty solid plan to be able to accomplish it. That's it for today. Hopefully you guys are as excited as we are to complete this project. And you'll be seeing plenty more coming up in future videos. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment for us. And stay tuned till next week.